Good morning, grade fours, and welcome to WorksheetCloud.com's online lessons. I hope that you are well and warm wherever you are because it is freezing, freezing cold in Cape Town. Goodness me, if I could be wearing my gown and my beanie right now, I would. It is so cold and it's been raining and raining for days on end now. So yeah, I hope that you are warm wherever you are. And grade fours, I'd like to warmly welcome any of our new viewers for today. I hope you are excited. I hope you came prepared. But I have some great news for you today. You don't need to write anything down unless, of course, you want to. You can just watch and learn. If you have any questions about this lesson or any of my other lessons, please send an email to grade4 at worksheetcloud.com and we will get back to you as soon as we can after this lesson. And today's lesson is going to be on visual literacy. So I'd like you guys to just sit there for a moment and think about what could visual literacy mean? Some of you would know immediately and say, hey, miss, this was the answer. But some of you really need to think about, think about it. So what I want you to do to take note of is the word visual. Okay, look at the word visual. And that word should give you an idea of what visual literacy is about, okay? So the word visual means something that you can see with your eyes, okay? I don't know what else you can see with, but <laughs> it's about stuff that you can see, okay? And what you can gain from what you are seeing. And then literacy is reading okay it's about it's it's like english when we do literacy we learn about reading and we're learning about comprehension skills so visual literacy is using images okay and our eyes to tell what how we can gauge and get meaning from different things but i will get more into it with you as the lesson goes on Grade fours, just give me a second. I think we, my slides doesn't want to go. Just give me a second. So our lesson outline for today is we're going to have a check-in. Now, usually I have an inspirational quote for you guys. And I thought today we're going to do something a little different. Okay, so we're going to have a check-in. Then we're going to do spice up our sentence where we use our adverbs and adjectives to make our sentences a bit more interesting and creative. We're going to look at what is visual literacy and then the types of visual literacy that you can find. So that is what the lesson outline is for today. I hope you are excited, grade fours. So let's check in. Firstly, you know, when I was in class and I'm in class with the kids, I always asked them, how are you? And what I noticed was that all of them said the very same things. I would say, how are you? And they would say, happy. Okay, and the next one I would say, how are you? Happy. And then I have about 20 of my learners saying happy. And while the other 10 says sad, and the other 10 says nice. Now, grade fours, there are so many wonderful, wonderful words out there, okay? So, for today, if I had to ask you how you are right now, whether you were cold, whether you were warm, whether you were really upset, or whether you were happy, sad, or feeling nice, <laughs> I want you to use these words the next time someone says, how are you? Okay, so 
you are not allowed to use the words like nice, happy, or sad. Okay. Instead of using the word nice, you will say enjoyable, pleasant, delightful. Okay. And I want you to use this as a challenge, grade fours. Instead of using these words that are so common, let's change up our vocabulary a little bit and use words that mean quite a similar thing, but we are just building on our vocabulary and we are sounding a little bit better than saying nice all the time to describe things especially. And then instead of using the word happy, I want you to use the word jovial, contented, or cheerful. Happy is one of the most common words that people use to describe their feelings. And although the word happy is fine to use most of the time, I think that knowing that there are other words that mean the same are quite interesting. I mean, I always find it quite funny when I ask my kids to write out, to say how they are feeling, and then they say, oh, miss, I feel jovial today. You know, I know they mean happy, and that that's great. So I, I want you, I challenge you, grade fours, to use these words. When your parents come home, whoever says, hi, ha, how was your day? How are you feeling? And you go, miss, mom, I feel contented. I feel jovial, you know? Okay, and then if you are feeling sad, you can use the words disheartened, sorrowful, or dejected. Okay, those words already sound sad. And in this way, people will know how you're feeling, but you are using and building on your vocabulary. So if you are having a very tough day and you're not feeling so good, you can say, Dad, Mom, I feel disheartened. Okay, and I'm sure they're going to be pretty shocked by your use of such a big word, um, grade four. So that is my challenge to you, for you, for this week. And I hope that you all understood this. And by the way, grade, these are synonyms that I am using. So basically, the words mean the same thing, only we are now, and I'm going to repeat myself, bowling on our vocabulary. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, spice up the sentence. John wrote in his book. Now, as you can see, grade fours, I already gave you my one, okay? I want you to, if you want to write it down or just shout out the answers, I did say in the introduction that you will not need to write anything down unless you want to. So, John wrote in his book, okay? If we had to break this up into parts of speech, we would know that John is a proper noun, okay? He is the subject of the sentence and it's the name of a person. Wrote is the action that John did in the sentence. So it is a verb. In this word is a preposition. It's telling you where John wrote in relation to the object, which is the book. Now, the book is a common noun, okay? The name of everyday thing. His, however, is not a pronoun. And I know some of you were thinking, Miss, it's a pronoun. Mm -mm, not a pronoun. It is a possessive adjective. It's actually describing the book. It's not any book. It's his book. Okay, and then I added Jolly John excitedly wrote in his favorite book. Okay, so Jolly John, grade fours, sit and think, what did I use to spice up that part of the sentence? I'm going to give you a few seconds to figure it out. Right, so, Jolly John, I used figures of speech, specifically alliteration, where we use the repeating or repetitive of the consonant letters in the beginning of the words. So, Jolly is a J, John, okay? So, now I'm using my alliteration, 
to spice the sentence up. Then I added in excitedly. Excitedly tells me more about the way John wrote in his book. So therefore, it is an adverb because it's describing or telling me more about the verb. In his, his remains a possessive adjective, but I've added in another adjective here, grade fours, which is favorite book. So I've added in one, two, three adverbs, adjectives, how it, and or you can say alliteration as well to give the sentence a little bit more life. Okay, so instead of saying John wrote in his book, I am now saying Jolly John excitedly wrote in his favorite book. Can you see the difference, grade fours? I hope you can. And I hope that you tried it on your own as well. Moving on. Right. What is visual literacy? It is the ability to construct meaning from images. Like I said in the beginning, grade fours, visual literacy has to do with what we see and how we can interpret what we are seeing. Critical thinking is important as you should learn how to analyze an image and draw conclusions about that image. So once you've gotten that image, grade fours, it is up to you to look at it and try and figure out what am I seeing? Is there a message to this image? What camera angle was it taken on? And usually when a picture is taken and it's used for visual literacy, there is a reason why an angle was chosen or the way the picture was taken. Was it in black and white or was it in color? All of these things are ways for you to think critically about those images and try and analyze this visual image or image that you are given to use as visual literacy. So the types of visual literacy that you get, you get photographs, which we spoke about like images, okay? pictures. Now I know some of you are saying but Merce, isn't that the same thing? No, actually photographs are taken as in like the photo that you're taking with your phone or a camera, okay? Pictures can be a picture that is found in a newspaper article, for example. Cartoons, adverts, and videos, okay? So these are the types of visual literacy that you can get. Now, grade fours, there are many, many other types as well. But we are just going to look at these few for now so that I can get you into the understanding of how you can use visual literacy. And when, we, when you do get an activity on visual literacy, you will know what to look for and how to answer the questions. So, for photographs and pictures. I put them together as they are very similar. The only difference is that photographs has angles, okay, and you and you discuss how the picture was taken or the photograph was taken, okay. So that is the difference between the photographs and the pictures. But in for the purposes of this lesson, I've included the similarities. So pictures and photographs can be analyzed in terms of composition line, color, texture, and the use of light and shadow. Now I know grade four, some of you are going, what? You know, it's not as important for you at your grade now, but in terms of, for out of interest sake, this is how we would look at photographs or pictures, okay? And I spoke to you already about color, like whether it was in black and white or whether what time of day the picture was taken. And that should indicate or give us more information about the picture. There are focal points and angles which are usually used for a specific purpose. So when we have a picture in our visual literacy test or assessment, okay, the, there's a reason why they are using that particular picture. So we have to ask ourselves, what, how, why, okay? 
usually it's done for a specific purpose. So what I've done is I've included a picture for us to look at and quickly discuss. There you have it, grade fours. There is a little girl sitting on a chair. I think it's a chair. Yes, it looks like a, a chair. And she is holding her finger to her mouth. Okay, so if I leave this on for a few seconds, I want you to look at the picture and try to ask yourselves how, when, where. It doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. As long as you're looking, you are, see, you are looking with your eyes, which means it's visual. Okay, and you're trying to get a story from this picture. Okay, so I think some of you have already probably realized that this little girl is sitting by herself and it looks like she is thinking, okay, because her finger on her chin like this, she's sitting alone by herself and she's obviously, and her legs are crossed. Can you see the things that you notice? Her legs are crossed, her fingers on her chin, and she's obviously trying to think about something, okay? Maybe someone did something wrong to her, or maybe she's thinking about what she's going to have for lunch, okay? Maybe she's sitting thinking, I feel like I want to go to swim now. Okay, because she obvi it obviously looks like it's summer because of the outfit she's wearing. So you see what conclusions I'm drawing from this picture. Based on her outfit, it can't be winter. Okay, because she's obviously wearing a dress and um, it looks like she's sitting outside. So it has to be warm. So grade four is this. What I'm trying to show you is when you are given a picture, you need to look at all the details to draw those conclusions. Cartoons. A cartoon is usually humorous, that means funny, drawn pictures of a situation. They express ideas or draw our attention to a specific situation. They provide enjoyment but can also bring be bringing a very serious topic to light. So cartoons sometimes are funny, most of the time they are funny. But sometimes a cartoon is written because there is a serious issue going around and the artist wants people's attention to be focused on that. So even though it's done in a funny way, it's still done for a specific purpose. I've included a cartoon here for us to look at. Okay, so here's a boy in the first frame because in cartoons, these blocks over here are called frames. So in the first frame, we can see a little boy taking a hammer and knocking nails into a table, it looks like. So I'm going to leave this on for a few seconds, grade fours. I want you to just take notice. Okay, so I'm going to leave this on for a few seconds, grade fours, and I just want you to notice. Um, something about this cartoon, read through it, then I'll read it with you after that. And then we can see what exactly is going on and how we can use this as visual literacy. Okay, here's a few seconds starting now. Okay, so he's going... Whap, 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 knocking the, the hammer with the nails into the table. Calvin, what are you doing to the coffee table? Okay, so clearly mommy is very upset. And Calvin's looking with a hammer in his hand, like looking at his mom going, um, I don't know what you're talking about. Is this some sort of trick question or what? So Calvin asks his mom. Now this is funny, Grey Falls, because we all know that what he is doing is very, very bad, okay? But as you can see in the first frame, he looks like he's having quite a bit of fun. So if I had to ask you what is happening in the first frame, you would say you can see that he is taking a hammer and hitting the nails in the table, okay? And he looks quite happy about it. In the second frame, you can see his mom is not very happy about it. 
and she is shouting because look at the words in bold and it's also used in a bubble over here all in capital letters okay so even if it's normally in capital letters you can see by looking at the words that she is shouting okay and she's running to him trying to get him to stop as you can see in this third frame calvin doesn't realize what he was doing he's looking at the table as if to say hmm, i don't know what you're talking about okay and then he asks his mom is that some sort of trick question as if she can see what he's doing well, why is she asking him that but obviously she was trying to get him to stop and clearly the table is now ruined so in each frame you can look at the people's facial expressions you can look at the way their body language is and that will indicate to you what is happening or how you can read this text or this image okay advertisements advertisements use images to persuade people to buy certain products they use images combined with words to help people remember and make relations between their product and how great it would be to have it and they like to use images in advertisements because that's what draws people's attention so hogs breath cafe kids eat for free monday and tuesday cream a free drink and ice cream and as you can see there's a plate of food over here and um, a toy over there and you can obviously see it's trying to draw people's attention to the picture over here and they use cool techniques by saying kids eat for free so that would encourage families to go because mom and dad would have to pay but the children would eat for free and they also include a free drink and ice cream which also now promotes people to come to the to the store to eat so that they can get their free drink and free ice cream advertisements uses these kind of imagery and words to try and encourage people to come to their restaurants or buy the products and in that way their business get better so that brings me to the end of this lesson grade fours i hope that you understood what visual literacy is and how you can use it when especially if it's an activity how, how to look at those images and get information from them. Remember, it's all about asking those questions to yourself. What is happening? Look at the facial expressions. Look at body language, okay? Look at what the people are wearing because when they ask you the question of something like, what season do you think it is? You should be able to tell by looking at that picture or image that is given to you. If you have any questions about this lesson or any of my other lessons, you know what to do. But in case you don't, send an email to grade 4 at worksheetcloud.com. An activity is provided for you after this lesson. Remember to keep checking in on those people that are close to you. Grade 4s, remember when I checked in with you this morning, check in on your parents sometimes. Check in on your grandparents. Check in on the people that are close to you. Give them a phone call and say hi. How are you? And listen, you know, because connecting with people is what makes us human. So from me, Mrs. Nicole Frank, goodbye and have a wonderful day further.